what is my agenda is let me define an agenda of today's session mm. uh, start discuss about api design okay. so we cover the basics of the mule message processing okay, okay. that's a uh, few fundamentals we, we covered now i want to discuss about the api design this is also equally important okay. yep today i will cover the basics of api design okay and we come back to implementation and we see the debug process how to debug the new message processing and uh, we see we discuss about uh, fvm component in component in your message processing section these two are related to implementation and we will do in any point studio this we do in the api design okay so this is to this agenda okay nice right. yes. now we need to design an api we need to design uh, the rest api for our integration okay. so what is the basic usage basic advantage if i expose my integration as an api amut we discuss yes. yeah yeah so the purpose is that other applications can get to um, you know can have access or communicate to your application yeah. via via online excellent so the client or uh the application which you want to access my api mm -hmm. can have detailed information yeah. about my my api mm -hmm. so the api design is simple document so what is uh, tells is what are all the resources available in an api and what are all the services my api provides right and for each to access each service what input the client has to pass and after execution of that service what output the api returns back to client right so that information is bundled inside the api so that the client who are want to access the api has a detailed information what what input he has to pass what output he, he will get from the api so all the information he has therefore he can efficiently use our apis right no. this acts as a, a contract between service consumer and service provider right api works as a contract right if there is no contract service consumer has no way to understand about the service provider right yeah, that's right okay now that is the basic definition of api yeah now coming to our um, the rest api and let me show you some slides on that so you know about the rest right rest is an architecture style based on web standards right yeah. so we use the http protocol to to implement the rest standard right mm -hmm. and rest is a primary basic block sorry resource is a primary basic block in the rest standard so what is the resource you had a resource amud um, resource resource yeah in the in the rest terminology the resource in the rest terminology we always use the resources right okay so in the rest first very first step in the rest is we identify the resources yeah then you may ask what is resource first identify they will say that very first step in rest implementation is rest mm -hmm. api design is identify the resource so resource is a real time object right so i want to develop my uh, something like hr api using for hr hr guys i want to develop some api for hr so here the real time object is employee for this application employee is an object what this hr api want to do is it want to create a new employee to the organization if a new employee joins the organization you want to create a new employee 
and uh, you want to generate the report on the employees for that hr application want to retrieve the already existing employees right retrieve the information about the employees yeah and uh, you want to change some employee information some address got changed or employee designation got changed the hr application want to update the employee right update the update the employee when employee left the organization this application want to remove that employee delete the employee delete right scrap right so my api hr api want to do these operations it want to create the new employees we want to get the information about the employees we want to update the employees and delete the employees so here on what object is it is working is it is working on the object called employee object mm. right employee is not a simple string or an integer right it is an object it has some properties employee object has properties like employee as a name mm. employee might as employee number or employee id Yeah. and it has a designation some blah blah properties are there for each employee right mm -hmm. so this is an object it's not a simple uh, string right object so this is called a resource i call this as a resource resource in the rest terminology mm -hmm. so what is resource means the real time object that we want to create or we want to retrieve or we want to update or delete so that object is called resource resource so everything in the rest we it is all about the uh, sorry it uh, revolved about the resources first we need to identify the resource so a resource is accessed via common interface based http standard methods okay yeah okay so if i want to create a new employee i need to use some http method to create a new employee mm -hmm. then what method is appropriate to create a new employee so to create a new employee client has to post yep the client who is who want to create a new employee he has to post the information about the employee first this is employee name employee number that 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 get this employee that this message come to the rest api or rest application take this employee information and create some the backend maybe store the database whatever right mm -hmm. it creates yeah. employee in the back end so it takes the employee from the client for that the appropriate method is a post post only supports right post has a body so that in the body this message travels to the application and application can able to create an employee for that to create the appropriate method is a post method the http yeah. standard method yeah okay now sometimes the client want employees client want to see the employees information mm -hmm. now the message flows from the api back to client this way right yeah so what what kind of request the client need to do is he need to do the request using yeah. get method get method yeah right get get mm -hmm. means get the employee information from the application right mm -hmm. so to retrieve the appropriate method is the get method on the resource on the employee if i apply get method the client will retrieve information from application to the client console okay if a client want to create a new employee use the post method in the post method he post the employee details on the employee resource so that employee got created on the back end right well yeah. so to update a specific employee there is a, some employee called hamo they want to update the specific employee the client will pass the employee id and what information you want to update right yeah. but that the appropriate method is a put method put method yeah right so delete the employee there is a delete method is there these are http standard methods yeah right so on the resource i will apply this the standard method and i will develop the application that's what here it's me i'll show you the demo also don't worry on that okay yeah i'll show you i really like to, i really like how you laid out yeah. so Thank there's you. a couple of technology here yeah in in a rest api and you know you deal with 
you would deal with the resources, right? Correct, correct. yeah, and, exactly. And the resources say that are real-time objects correct. that you that you want to interact with. Correct. And to do that, you you use HTTP, HTTP method. Yeah. Either either you know and you know to post when you're creating stuff. Exactly. To use a get method when you want to retrieve information. Excellent. When you want to update it, you put, when you want to delete, delete, when you delete the resources or no, no, you're not really just, but, and so this thing that, for example, like say that if you are adding or getting stuff, is what, what is that you're doing? Is it, and uh, we cannot say that we're adding resources, right? We cannot say that. Yeah, we are creating a resource on the back end. On the back end. So yeah, yeah. I thought, for example, in this example, mm -hmm. employee is yeah. the resource. Exactly, employee resource. But but what we add in is that a new employee information or updating information or deleting information. Yeah. The whole, you know, the whole the root of you know, we're not changing that, but we are changing what contains the, in the employee and I don't know table or whatever. Correct. So, so what is yeah. What is that? What is that part that we are updating or deleting or or posting or creating? Can we call it a resource or or it has a different name? Which one? Which one, Hamud? Um, so in your example, like the employee, right? Right, employee. Okay. When you want to add new employee, you'll use a post method. You want to create a new employee. Yeah. Yeah. Create new employee is a post method. Correct. Yeah. Correct. And when you want to when you want to update, you will do use a put, you know, exactly. retrieve get. Yeah. So for example, like when we and you know get and delete, you know, maybe get is, is very is very and uh, straightforward. Correct. But yeah. when we post in and new new employee inside mm -hmm. the imp, inside the employee mm -hmm. and object. Right. Yeah. What I'm thinking about it is that like it's like a table called an employee, right? Exactly. Yes, yes, yes. And in, inside the table, there's a columns and rows. Rows, yeah. That yeah. shows the, all the information about the employee. Exactly. So when we add in, we are inserting a new row. Mm, yeah. Like a new person. Correct. So and that's the one we add in or deleting or updating, but Correct. we're not touching the employee table, right? We're not changing the table, but we're changing the the roles hmm. that inside the employee yeah that is on on the implementation end Hamoud. so yeah. that is the next phase we are, we are not you know uh we are we, we are still in the design phase itself i know i know okay. so all right so, so I, that's okay. implementation yeah. your wish you can use the back end as data suit the database or you can yeah. store in the inside of file whatever way you you can implement the back end okay right okay so now we focus on the design itself the design okay all right yeah. all right i'm good implementation I'm, I'm... we do on the any point should be a little later okay 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 got it all right now we focus on the design how we are designed this api there is some one develop some some hr api where it, it's requires to create a new employees to retrieve employees to update employees and delete some. these are requirements required by the client we need to do these methods okay Okay. How a client can use your API and create a new methods on the back end, new employees on the back end, and uh, how a client can retrieve the employees from the application, how we update. So, all the stuff for that, we need to design the API first. Okay, yep, you have to design first. Yeah. All right, Got it. I'm with you. Yeah, so for design purpose, we're discussing about how the API would be designed, what methods used to do what kind of operations. So, that's a the discussion happening now, okay. Okay. I will show you the design. I will show you the RAM and then you get an idea about how we are designing the API and what is the advantage of design. This is all the stuff. Okay. So at the time of implementation, you, your, your questions will be answered, right? How we are doing that on the back end, how we are creating databases, how we are creating rows. That is all the implementation end, right? Okay. okay. Now in this session, fully focus on the design phase itself. So the REST application deployed in server provides access to the resources. And the REST client access the access and modifies the resources. Here means 
best uh, application is we develop some kind of new application we deploy to server so that mm -hmm. it can provide the that resource whatever resource we uh, design so in this case employee resource right yeah so we develop a rest application based on the employee resource and we deploy to server so that it provides access to the employee resource mm -hmm. and in this case the rest client is a postman using postman you can access the employee resource and you can modify the employee resource. so that's a vision by using you know yeah, get, get, yeah, yeah, get method, yeah, get post support. Uh, get post, uh, put support for each resource, okay. Your resource. Okay. Uh, this will discuss. Next thing is okay, we we'll discuss about the primary. Now, to describe the REST API hmm. in the mules of it was a say, language called Ramble. RESTful API modeling language. So to design to design API. the REST API, yeah. Okay. RESTful is R. A stands for API. M stands for modeling. And L stands for language. So RESTful API modeling language, RAML stand. RAML is used to design REST API, describe the REST APIs. Okay. Used to describe REST API. We will see how it is described the REST API. Okay. So the MuleSoft, uh, MuleSoft designed something called, uh, uh, deliver something called any point platform. Let us show any point platform. Any point platform is a complete infrastructure of the Microsoft. Mm -hmm. And using the any point platform, so what we can do is we can design APIs. We can design new APIs. Mm -hmm. And we can develop APIs, develop or implement mm -hmm. API. And we can deploy our API to different kinds of runtimes or servers. Hmm. Like API. And we can share our APIs to different stakeholders, our uh, external clients or internal teams, all those stuff. Hmm. Share our APIs and we can manage our APIs. We can do, we can apply different cons kind of security policies to our APIs so that they can secure it. Secure different kinds of other policies also. There we discuss our policies in that section. It means APIs. Okay. So this AnyPoint platform provides all these kind of features. So to design API, we have the design center in the AnyPoint platform. I show the design center now to design API. We need a simple API. Okay. So what is the purpose of design center? Is uh, so design API design center. Okay. I'm sorry. To design API, we have the design center. And to develop API, we use yesterday, right? What is the component used to develop APIs, Hamul? Is a API, any point design, right? Any point studio. studio. Use, right? Studio, you yeah. yesterday you implemented simply an application, right? Oh. So where, where you have all the connectors, all the stuff. So we're using That's that. That's you can, develop. Okay, I see. You can see. develop API. Yeah, Anypoint Studio. Studio is a where we can develop APIs. And deploy APIs, we have the uh, runtime. Runtime manager, I'll show you the runtime manager. Mm -hmm. And locally also we can deploy API using Anypoint Studio also, you can able to deploy API. Yesterday you, you, you deployed API and you showed me, right? From the, from yeah, the yeah, postman, yeah. there you deployed API, okay? And share API, there is something called any point exchange. Any point exchange is a place where you can share your APIs. Mm -hmm. Like you develop the um, mobile applications and you put those, those applications in the Play Store or App Store mm -hmm. so that other guys can able to download and can use, right? Yeah. Similarly, you can develop the Mule applications, so you can post an any point exchange so that other parties in the world, they can use your application also, okay? Exchange is a place for sharing your APIs or applications. 
right? Yeah. And manage API, something called any point manager. So there are different components. These are all comprises called any point platform. Platform components of design, you can design APIs, mm -hmm. develop, deploy, share, manage. To do individual uh, activities, we have separate components, some separate sections are there. This. So, yes. so question, yeah. question here. So it looks like, um, you know, design API, and deploy API and share mm -hmm. API and manage API, all of okay. that is done inside any point platform. Exactly, yeah. But but the develop but but developing API, you use any point studio. Yeah, it's also a part of any point platform. Should we also part of it? Is it? Yeah. So 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 the stuff that you have, like where you were where we're designing the mule you know events stuff that's that's not any point platform which one the one you were you would be using the tool that were, like any point studio this one that we yeah. Were, yeah yeah so this is not this is not part of the any point platform no it is also part of any point if you go over here right any point dot milsoft dot com this is the yeah. where you create your milsoft um, account right Okay. okay. If you sign into any point platform, see you landed into dashboard of any point platform over here. Yeah. Mm. It's loading one moment, please. Uh, it loads quite faster. This is. Uh, See, this is a dashboard of any point platform, right? You can see the design center. You can see the exchange. You can see the any point studio, right? Here. Oh, any point studio there. Any point studio, any point exchange, any point design center, and API manager, runtime manager. These are all primary components of any point platform. I see. So the first one is that is where you're designing. Yeah. API. Yeah. The second one, exchange, is where you share it. Share your APIs. The the anything studio is what you develop. Is that right? Correct, correct. So that is the power of any point platform. What Microsoft do is they bunch all the components in one place and delivered yeah. as one single product. And this owned by Microsoft. Yeah, this owned by Microsoft. Right? Is it is it a cloud version of Microsoft? Is it? Microsoft is company, right? Yeah. So this is this is a cloud though. This is a online. It's a cloud version. Yeah, yeah. It's cloud only, it's a cloud version. And so there is no, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not asking we should do it, but th that's only an uh, option we have. There is no like a one we can install locally. Yeah, local installation is also there. Some, you know, some clients like banking clients, they yeah. don't want to go over the cloud. They won't, they won't trust any point, sorry, Microsoft. Right. They won't trust anybody. They so want, how do they, so uh, what do they, what do they have? So what do they have then? Then they they use the on-prem uh, the backend systems, and yeah. uh, they use some kind of uh, VPC connectivity yeah. to the to the any point. They can use mm -hmm. that. Or, or there are several deployment options are available. In Microsoft ships right is some kind of product mm -hmm. uh, purely on-prem. So do, do they, they so, need you to deploy the Microsoft itself? Complete so on-prem. It, yeah. So if that's the case, yeah, they will still use the any point platform, but it will point it to their local environment. Environment, yeah. correct. correct. But the design, expo, exchange, everything here is the same. Same, yeah, it's same, exactly same. Okay, got it. Thank yeah. you. Based on their customer requirement, we'll start to ship the those kind of product. Excellent. So they have to, yeah, you have to purchase something for the mule soft, right, to get the thing set up. Exactly. There are several <coughs> deployment options available based on the client customer deployment, uh, you know, uh, requirement. They will provide such kind of deployment. Yeah. You can go for the pure on-prem, pure local, or uh, cloud, and uh, there's some kind of hybrid requirement. Some components in the cloud and some components in the local. That is also possible. Okay. And they can you can deploy entirely in the in the cloud. That is also possible. So different options are available. Okay. 
based on your uh, customer uh, thing. Okay. Requirement is right. Got it. I'm with you. Thank you. Okay. Now, uh, so this any point platform is mm -hmm. comprises all these kinds of uh, you know, components together, so that if a customer gets the any point platform, he can design APIs over here. He can develop APIs using any point platform, so the customer yeah. can deploy here. Okay, mm -hmm. and he can ex exchange. He can access. He can put some access management, all the stuff in one in one 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 product. Okay? Now, we start the first step with the designing APIs. For that, I need to go to the design center. Let's okay, start designing. Got it. Now, I want to design a very, very simple API. Now, there is already employee API is there over here. I want to create uh, some kind of um, account API. Okay. So, some some uh, uh, customer API, some customer I want to, uh, I want to create some bank, want to create some new customers, okay? okay. So to create a cus customer API, I need to, I need to log in, after logging, there is a button called create new. I, I need to click on the create new API, okay? So create new. Yeah, there are different kinds of uh, options are available. Right now we focus on the API specification. We discuss the API fragment, new new application. We discuss it later. I don't want to miss or discuss all the things one together. The very first step, I want to develop an API specification. Specification. Okay, API spec. So create new API spec. I need to give the spec name. I'm going to give the spec name as customer API. Create API spec. And uh, so if you see over here, here I need to describe my customer API using the RAML. That is the RAML file, mm. right? So in the RAML, what the first thing I need to, um, what, is, what is the first activity I need to do by designing API, not forget about RAML. What the first activity? I I told you right. Hmm. If you want to develop any kind of API, what is the very very first activity? What we to do? First step is you design an API. Yeah. Like a resource. Right. So for me, I want to create new customers. I want to update customers. I want to delete okay. customers. I want to do all things the customer right. Hmm. Okay. So my resource is customer for that slash. Is the <clears throat> did I answer correctly? Or was it say like a identify the resource? Yeah, identify resource. The yeah. very first step. Yeah. Okay. So I I identify my resource as a customer. So yeah. I put a customer over here. Right. Now, uh, I will develop this this API and mm -hmm. I will give this API to the, my clients. Right. Okay. Right. Why, why I'm developing this API? I provide this API to the client so that client can use this API, right? That's right. right. Then client want to create a new customer. Then what method you use to create a new, new customer? Post. Exactly. Good. The post method. Good. Save the post over here. Right. So that, that backslash is a comment or is it? It is a, a, is a, is a RAML. It is syntax. We need to put uh, for a resource, we need to put slash. Okay. This is an every, indication every, that this so is a every resource. resource has to have a backslash. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Also, or forward slash, then yeah. the resource name. Resource name and the colon at the end. Yeah. This is a resource definition. Okay. Okay. Now see, I put post over here. Hmm. What I did put, what I when what is the reason I need to post here is because you want to create something. Create now. Post is a child of the customer. Child means see, you can you you can uh, see some some space over here, some tab over here from here yeah. to here. Mm. So this indicates that this post is a child of the customer. Means this post is apply on the customer resource. Yeah, it should not be like this. This is not valid case. So is that, like a, is that like a one tab or two tab? One tab. One tab. 
okay so the method should be child of the resource resource yeah how how you indicate the child means you need to put a tab over here then it indicates that okay this is post is we are applying on the customers right mm. in the same raml file you can you can have multiple resources for for example um, yeah in the raml file i am creating customers and i am creating accounts also for example so to define a accounts i am creating one more resource here slash accounts this mm. is different resource right <coughs> So in this in this API space there are two resources. One is customer resources there and account resources there, right? Yeah. And to create a customer, I use a post method. And to retrieve a customer, what method we need to use? Get. Get method. So now you see, get and post are siblings. They are yeah. the same level. Yeah. Right. To update a uh, customer, what method we need to use? Post. Post method. Well, you can even click it. To, it's clickable, to, huh? Yeah. That's nice. It's, it's clickable. Now, to to retrieve accounts, what, what's the method? Uh, I want to retrieve the accounts. What's the method I need to use? Retrieve. retrieve get. Yeah, get method. Yeah, yeah. Right. So likewise, we will apply methods on the resources. Yeah. Right. Now, now we go to the second step. The client who is using this resource want to. Create a new customer, right? Yeah. Then use a post method. Then the post method he will send the customer information in a body section. Mm -hmm. Put the body over here, right? Yeah. Post has body, and that body has and uh, the body might be. The JSON or XML. Usually, we use the JSON or XML, whatever the content, right? Okay. Okay. <clears throat> now, now uh, here, if you observe this this snippet, these four lines, right? Mm. Focus on the four lines. What are the four lines indicates? There is a customer resources there. The resource and uh, HTTP method method post means this is used to create a new customer, yeah. and the client can post the uh, the body customer information the body in what format the client post in the json, JSON yeah okay and we want to define you can define some examples also how the uh, customer is look like in the example section example maybe the customer look like this uh, maybe <clears throat> some customer information yeah You can put any any parameters, whatever, right? Mm. Now this snippet, see, this should be mandatory. See, you should not put all these lines the same line. See, the customer for the resource post the child for post body is a child, and for body this 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 indication uh, right application my is the child, an example is child of the this application JSON. And this type of uh, uh, hierarchical structure means parent, child, and relationship. This, this type of defining defining things in this manner. This is called the YAML. YAM, YAM, YAML, 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 yet another modeling language, YAML. So yeah. that the hierarchy called YAML or exactly. the or exactly. the language language it, it is called language, but it's very very simple. Just you, if you want, if you're describing something in a hierarchical manner, that is called YAML. Okay. Okay, it's not a language, it's simple. It's some, it's language means you, you will confuse a lot. Maybe some syntax, nothing is there. Just you defining something in a parent-child relationship over here, like this. Putting yeah. some space, you know, uh, yeah. putting some space here. The space yeah. itself indicates that this is the child of, this is a parent, right? So that is called YAML. That's okay. just weird. So, so, That's so, so, it. so, uh, can you clarify for me? Yeah, sure. Go and ahead. so, Ramal versus YAML. Yeah, so Ram, Ram is, yeah. So, Ramal versus YAML. Yeah. 
the Ramel. language you, the language yeah. you design in API in MuleSoft called Ramel. Correct. Correct. But, Ramel, but, yeah. but inside the Ramel, yeah. the hierarchy or structure, how you structure the Ramel is and yeah. API specification. Exactly. Yeah. Is YAML. YAML, exactly. Exactly. Your, your understanding is 100% correct. Wow. Yeah. Got it. So, YAML follows the YAML standard. YAML standard means just. Um, I like that. I like how you put it. You say, you say YAML follows. Yeah. YAML stands for YAML. Sorry. Another modeling language. Yeah, yeah, YAML is yet another modeling language, but it's very simple. Nothing is there in the YAML. Just you're display describing the data in a hierarchical structure. Okay. Okay, that's you're putting some space um, between child and parent, uh, something like this. I explained, right? This is the YAML structure. Yeah. Ramel follows the YAML structure. Okay. Right. See, if you see over here, the customers is the resource, and there are different three methods post method, get method, and put method. Okay. okay. Let me the design of get method also. For get method, get doesn't have body. Actually, get, get means simply what you want to return information from the client, right. sorry, yeah. from the server. Yeah. yeah. So, in that case, I won't send any body. I, I, as a client, I won't send any anybody to, to the you know service, right? Mm -hmm. So get as a child is response. Because get expects a response from the server. Mm -hmm. Right. There are some HTTP um, codes are there. Okay. 200 is a success code and 400 are failure code, something like that. Assume the success matter, first happy path. If this 200. <clears throat> That response has a body, and that body is a JSON format. Might be it looks like this. Two customers, customer one, customer two. Oh, I see. Example. So it's very strictly. Therefore, yeah. um, if you're not following that one, it doesn't work. Somebody see something? This is good. So the syntax is complaining. <clears throat> it should be, you know, yeah. under this one. I put the same level, right? It won't accept in that. That's right. Okay. Now, okay. I don't know. That looks good. There. I will. I additionally simple API, right? Mm -hmm. So this API has the two methods. One is to create a new customers and another is to retrieve a customer. And sometimes, right, uh, see, the post create a new customer and get retrieves all the customers in the in the application. Now, mm -hmm. you want to see a specific customer. You, you, you don't want to see all the customers. I want to see a specific customer for Hamoud from the system, right? Mm -hmm. Every single customer. For that, I need to pass some unique identification of the Hamoud. Like a Hamoud uh, ID, uh, or... ID or Hamoud name or whatever, something, right? Yeah. yeah. So for that, I need to declare something called sub resource. Mm. 
sub resource i declare inside the main resource customer slash and customer id customer id this thing i put in the bracket see see customer slash customer id customer id i am wrapping inside curly braces right so it's like a uri from yeah uh, means at run time i will pass the customer id if you want to uh, know the information about the ganesh i will pass I the see. ganesh uh, ganesh I id i see i see right if you want to know information on hamud i will pass hamud id right yeah. okay so that one here i can't i will apply something called get method to get the information about the hamud body jason sometimes you have stack so but don't worry don't worry nothing wrong it gives long spaces but should not be in the same level you can't you can put your example or your example is not mandatory always okay you can have commit also is that right so all the examples you use in it's not it's not required but it's good to have it yeah good to have yes so you you tell in the api this is how how the example of the data will look like yeah i'll show you that one that what is the advantage of putting examples i can show you now i can put a simple example Okay. All right. Now, it's very simple API design for customers, right? Actually, uh, customers using customer object, right? The real time data data object. Uh, I need to declare some objects somewhere. I will in the next session. I will show you uh, how to declare data type, customer data type. Here, I am putting everything example. Okay, it's okay. not a standard. We will okay. use. We won't use the standard wide developer. Uh, real time apis mm -hmm. okay but as of a very simple uh, thing to simplify this api definition i put in the examples right so what so happens you, yeah tell me yeah so you have uh, two methods inside the customers two yeah two two customers yeah what is that no like uh, under um, under customers resource yeah you have a uh, two methods put one post and okay. one one get okay. and they're inside the customers and you okay. have another so this is also under customer the customer this id knows, yeah the customer but it is a resource we can't see know, it's it's a sub -resource. Sub -resource. but it's inside it is inside of a customer's resource yeah right so more, yeah correct inside the customer therefore you see the over here the the, the url path look like this okay. customer's okay. customer oh yeah i see now i see now okay now you want to update a new uh, update some customer you can you need to put um, put method over here not there yeah. put method mm. means you are passing the customer i want to update this specific customer right mm. put as a body json system so, not putting an example like this this one also now <clears throat> this api there are two uh, methods on the main resource and two methods sub resource right okay okay now why we uh, why new soft advocates designing the api uh, something called api first approach we design they use a design called api first approach sorry design first approach okay so what happens is actually when you design the api mm. in earlier days they will develop the api first without any designing maybe uh, they implement the api they develop the api to they develop the api what happens is you got the requirements requirements that design the api 
the developer API of developing the API to showcase to the client. Yeah. Right? They demonstrate to the client. Mm -hmm. And at this point, what happens is client has a different kind of expectations on the requirements, but our IT team understands a different manner and they develop the application different manner. The moment when you are showcasing to the client, client got surprised. Nobody, I'm, I didn't expect in this manner, I have some different expectations, but you design different thing. I don't yeah. want that. I want to, you know, different way. Design. Right? Mm -hmm. So at this point, we put a lot of time and efforts. Our development team put some considerable amount of time and efforts in develop the API. What happens? All our times and effort got wasted. We need to develop again, right? Mm -hmm. So instead of that, before developing itself, we design the API. If there is an option to showcase your API at this point itself, the design point itself, yeah. right? You showcase to the API to the design point itself, the customer, and you customer gives some kind of points. Customer gives feedback. Based on that, you refine the API design again, and you refine the design again multiple times. Mm -hmm. And at some point of time, you you are customer on the same page, right? Yeah. So you you refine the APIs multiple times, and that is agreed by the customer. And at that moment, you start the development. After that, once you and your customer are same page, then you start the development. So if you follow this kind of approach, right? Mm -hmm. Then you can save a lot of time and effort because at the development point, we customer IT team put a lot of time and effort. Mm -hmm. Means uh, after that, you want to change something, it reaches very costly, very expensive. Right? Before design, it's very less expensive. You can change any time, design very easily rather than the development, right? Yeah. Okay. So any point use this kind of feature to showcase your design to the customer that is called a mocking feature. Mark, mock, mock. Yeah, it's mock as a developed application. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now I design the API here, right? <clears throat> so you are my customer. I, I want to showcase you this application to your customer. Okay. What I'm doing, hey Hamud, uh, I developed a customer API to you. Mm -hmm. Let me show you this, this application. This is what you need to send. This is what we will send back to you. Mm -hmm. Like that, you know, I'm marking configuration. Marking service configuration. Right here. Uh, one moment. Do you have to save this? Yeah, we should. Like all yeah. this stuff that you did, do you have to save it? Yeah, it's automatically saved. It's automatic save. Automatically save. The okay. cloud, yeah. Mm. In the cloud. It used the copy of the cloud URL. So go, go so go back. Can you go back one more time? What do you? How do you get here? Yeah, this one. If you mark this configuration, right? So you click so that. We do this one. It used uh, something link over here. Click that link. Service. Yeah, it copy settings. Okay. Yeah, settings. You copy the URL. Mm. Okay, copy, and go to the client. Like Postman. <laughs> And uh, now I want to get the use to get uh, this the resource. What resource we are using? Customers. Customers. Customer right? resource. Send it. Returns this one. Right. So I can show you how uh, this is a you know customer API. Wow. So for get method, all the customers. Got so it. so so this one is reading the the API design. API design. Yeah. The customer API design. Yeah. So how, no, how, yeah. How does how does it how does it know that? So this one, oh okay. It's not local right now. We we say the any point. Yeah. I can we say it the, we say oh, any point we will solve. Yeah. And it has that link, it has that program. I can share that link to you also. You can also try it out, okay? This. <laughs> I ping you in the chart. Okay. I can do that. I can try that. Yeah, you can try it out. One moment, let me grab some water. I'm feeling a little thirsty. Sure. sure.
Was it gut? I think it was gut. Yeah. I got it. This is weird. All right. So, so you create the API. So you you create the API. And I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm I'm not there. I'm, I'm, I just came. I went to get some water. Yeah. No yeah. 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 So I was able to. I'm, you know, I do the get method and I, I see what you see that the two two objects, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and for customer name okay. information. Now, um, I want to get some customer uh, Hamoud for that I'm passing something like some XYZ, some 112. I click on that. It doesn't exist. It is going some, it's one 200 okay, but it's not getting anything, but we have a resource, right? Let me see the API one. So, customer ID, get it should return this example. How about that is doing? How about that is our customer slash customer ID, right? Let me customer slash customer ID. I'll check it out. Why it is not? We, we don't customer. have the ID. Any we will pass anything. It has to return that that thing because the customer ID a runtime will pass, right? So it, it matches this thing. It has to return this this example, but some way it's not returning. Get me there. Sorry, get has sorry, this get has a body, it's not a body, yeah. It is a response. 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 I was gonna say that to you, but then I say it might be different. Yeah. <laughs> I, I know I, I noticed this yeah, that yeah. you had a you had a body. <laughs> then I said might be might be when you're retrieving one person, no. you need a body. Yeah. That's my answer. body is only for post methods. Okay. Yeah, you did say that. That's sorry. Uh, no problem. Yeah, that's it. Now we save in a moment. Star is not saved. Once per is saved automatically for some time. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's reaching right now. I'm getting right. See. Mm. If you pass something of a customer, it takes an ID. And uh, it ends uh, some this one, right? So this is not an actual working one. This is just mocking as an uh, this mock means as a Temporary. working yeah as we to mock it so that you can demonstrate your in this payloads to your customer. Yeah, this is what yeah. you need to pass. This is what you get. So you custom you and your customer right they yeah. they get the same page on the payloads. What information the customer is passing and what information is the customer right. Yeah. Okay. So um, then everything is good. Then we start the de development. Yes. Sorry. Yeah. So this is the uh, marking feature. Okay. Yeah. And now, is it how long? How long does it? And uh, what I'm saying, what's the what's the lifetime of this uh, marking? Um, is it is it only for temporary? Yeah, or is it going to be there for a while? Uh, this account, you, you create an account, right? In any point platform. Yeah, yeah. The, the account, you can use the account for one month, actually. Okay. So, but when you have a marking and link like this, mm -hmm. how long is it going to be valid? Yeah, or, the account or, valid. So, you our is okay. a free account, right? So, okay. Our free account will valid for one month. So till, till one month, the marking feature will valid. But for if the, you, yeah, but if you, if you have a like a permanent environment, yeah, that, that is, yeah, that that could be permanent, until yeah. you retire, right? It will be it will Correct. be available. 
Yeah. If you if you take an enterprise license of any fine yeah. platform, right? Yeah. Yeah. So if you there is an API on the enterprise license, you can mark it. That will be available to you know permanently. But our if we we develop these APIs using our temporary accounts, right? So it, it's for one month only, something like that. Okay. So let me, so let me make sure I, I I'm connecting all the dots. When yeah. when you have a requirement to okay. work on a to work on a project, okay, you you will design this. Right. You will design the API. Right. So for example, like I don't know, they will tell you they will tell you for example, this is the you know the you know the web service that you need to hit, right. yeah. and this is the information you need to get from that. And the resources. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then you design the API according to that that information. Right. And when you able to retrieve the information that you want, based on the examples or based on the design you create, mm -hmm. yeah. then you create a, a temporary link or mark. We call a mark, 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 marking, yeah, mark, marking, and mark, yeah. and you show the customers and say that. Yeah. Is, is this is working? Is this how you want it? Exactly. So so yeah. far, so the, so far you use in either MuleSoft or the Post or something that shows them an XML and format or yeah. or JSON format. Whatever, yeah. So the, the the customers you're dealing with, they they must you know they must you know like how to use a like a Postman or they have to use a some kind of a, and a yeah. It does expect it. The, the customer has to me because this is a HTTP application, right? Yeah. So the customer has, if any specific HTTP application, okay, you can test using his application. Uh, for generic uh, clients like Postman or ARC or something, some HTTP client applications are there. Yeah. So using so that, we demonstrate to the customer. Yeah. So they need to be familiar with that. They need to know that. Yes. Otherwise, yeah. yeah. Because you know, a lot of a lot, I don't know. I'm, I'm I'm new to this, but a lot of customers they like the, you know, for example, like UI, UI, right? Was that UI on the on the UI? User yeah, they, yeah, they may yeah. have a yeah better GUI like a website yeah. or something. <laughs> yeah, but but here actually the communication between customer IT team and the development team IT team. Yeah. So usually this kind of uh, discussion happens between IT teams. Between IT teams, all right. Yeah. So and I, I and I see them. now, even if I paste the you know the marker, mm -hmm. the marking URL, URL, if I paste yeah. that in in on in a normal URL, mm -hmm. it shows that yeah. the XML and uh, mm -hmm. output. XML output. Yeah. On the on the Chrome, you are you are saying? Yeah, yeah. I'm using Chrome, and I I can see now. In the Chrome. So yeah, I get the XML. Yeah, Jason is Jason. No, 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 Jason, Jason format. Jason, yeah, Jason. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, now, the API we designed is very, very a simple one. Yeah. Okay, we discuss about a little more about uh, API best practices and design all the stuff. Okay. Yeah, this is one right. So yeah. you design the API and you want to implement the API. You yeah. want to you know do some kind of uh, here design is simply a document. It is nothing working copy of the thing, right? You want to develop some working copy of this API. Yeah, it's just template, right? Yeah, it's simple, simple template. Right. So if you but want I can, to I can I can, yeah. Denise, I can I can see that yeah, you know. At the beginning, you might need to create this, but I can see that the more you do it, yeah. you may have a, yeah, a template that you can use to, you know, to configure, to design the API much faster than like, uh, you know, going tab and picking up all the, mm -hmm. do you think, do you think that makes sense where you may have a template that's, you know, you can, you can use. Yeah, that templates we're going to develop as part of the uh, API design itself. The templates is called uh, 
uh, resource types and tribes the little advanced ca development okay okay within within the mules within the ramer yeah within the ramer yeah all right ramer. now this was very simple you know very very frustration right i like to explain yeah. in very simple manner no, you know i know i know i, I explained this one we we can develop templates also okay that's good i think but i like i like the first i lo- the first I, I, I like you like you doing i like to learn from the foundation and then build build on that exactly yeah okay so now i'm going to my any point studio over here Mm-hmm. uh my intention is i want to uh do some working copy of the customer api okay so i'm creating new project new new project and that will be made as a customer api implementation let's Somewhere idea of maybe all the existing things. Then, therefore, again, different customer API, IMPL one. Mm-hmm. Now, the RAM is in the design center, right? Download RAM to the design center. I said this this tab. Okay. And uh, I need to do my credentials. I click on this one location. I need to ask my ID and tap on credentials. Now it will show up all the APIs present in my design center. Okay, so I want to create implementation to the customer API. So I'm setting customer API. Mm. Okay. Finish. So it will create a project. that implements the customer api okay mm-hmm. uh, see i create a project called customer api iampl1 Mm-hmm. and um, if you see this project uh if you observe this project right there are there is this called main flow this is called router flow main flow uh this is called api kit router i will explain what is api kit router if you see the api you designed how many how many resources are there there's only one resource customer resource yeah right? Yeah, and the customer resource. How many methods are there? There are two Three. methods. Two is it? Is there one more? Yeah, two. Yeah, two methods. And the other one was the ID. Okay. And one more sub resource are there. Yeah. On that we have one method, right? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, one method, two methods. There is two two methods are there. Two methods there. there. Right. So, as per the API, you need to provide implementation for the four. methods one method is to create an api so it's like to create a customer mm. and second method to retrieve a customer from the back end and uh, to get a specific customer and to update a specific customer there are four implementations you need to do right yeah okay so if you see the um any point studio the project will create it mm. project to be created now see there is one flow over here mm. and flow number 2 flow number 3 and flow number 4 the four flows are here right okay so each method it, yeah it, exactly each method has a is a flow as a flow, flow. okay now from the let me from the postman I want to retrieve a customer. Okay, yeah. let me put out here from the postman. So when from the postman, the postman, 
I want to create a new customer, for example, the client. Most when I call it a client. And um, the any point uh, design center, let me go to design center. This is the the design part information post custom the flow part So what happens is from the custom, from the postman, mm -hmm. use a post method and you send some customer information. Yeah. And use a post method and you send me some customer information, the body. The corresponding, the implementation lies over here actually in the, you know, in the new flow. Here you write what happens, what to do when when post method, you know, the implementation, you want to store in the, into the backend, you create something database component over here. Okay. And that will store to the backend. Before oh, that, I the see. database and table will be there over here, the customer table. Okay. Customer, if you add, say, takes this customer, you know, JSON. Mm -hmm. And adds a record over here. New record in the database. Yeah. That's a post method, so, right? So, all right. So, one second, I'm sure I understand. Yeah. So, the client posts a message yeah. using like a RAML specification. Yeah. And then the RAML passes the information to the mule. <clears throat> and the, that REST API. You know, you know, I don't know. So this was, it was a Rommel and now it became a mule event. It's what? not like that. Um, uh, this mule flow is created based on the Rammel. Okay. So it seems a little confusing. I put Rammel snippet over there, but this snippet created based on the Rammel. Okay. So it, it won't call this one and this one will call this, that there's not the manner. This, this is a design part, mm. and for this design, this, this is the implementation part. But in the runtime, client will call directly the implementation part. The design is not in the picture. This yeah. arrow is not at all valid. I'm sorry for confusing you. Mm. Just I want to explain something like uh, I will find manner. That is not. It's not going. Eraser. <laughs> Eraser is not working. Okay. That is that's okay. So yeah. So a client will directly call the, the implementation uh, Yeah. Okay, but this implementation is created on the base of this design. That's, that's what right. I want to say. That's right. Okay. So it is now it is a dummy implementation, but we need to create an implementation now. Actually, it creates a dummy implementation. Yeah. So the dummy. project is created on some dummy implementation, but as we are developers, we need to put actual implementation over here. So what do you want to do when posting a uh, in the post where we are creating? Okay. You want to save the information well, to the file system, or you want so to from here? From, yeah. So Ganesh, from here. This yeah. is the post method. Yeah. One on the top of it is the get method. Yeah. And the other sub programs or like ID stuff. Yeah. So if what I'm doing is now, I'm simply I'm deploying this application. Okay. So I'm not at all implementing anything, but I'm deploying the application. Simply I'm deploying yeah. the application. Well, that's a customer ID. 
takes a bit of time for the initial deployment. Mm -hmm. So if I deploy this application, starting phase, the next phase is starting phase. Yep, deploy. Right, right. Now, deployed. In that case, I need to put local host over here because uh, I see not no more invoking the marking URL. Right. Missing get. Yes. What port and what method and Acha, Acha. So something like API or path which takes an API. API. Yeah. Now it should work. Yeah. Right. So now, see from the uh, postman, I directly it is the implementation. Yeah. Right? Um, the call is not going to the design center. Design center, based on the design, this project got created actually. That's what I want to say. Mm. Okay. Now, the question people will ask in the certification is how many flows will get created for this API? They, they will give the API uh, RAML file and they will ask the RAML file, they give like this. Uh, for this design, how many new flows will get in the project? It create a project based on the API. Mm -hmm. So the answer is for each method, for each resource and method combination. See, customer yeah. is a resource and post method. For this combination, one flow will be created. And for customer, get one flow True. will be created, means two, two flows. Okay. And for this, this resource combination, customer ID and get, there is one flow created. And put and the customer ID. total four flows be created for this RAML. Okay. And for each resource and other combination, one flow will be created. On that flow, we need to implement actual implementation. What we want to do, how you want to return information to the backend, what you are storing in the database or storing in the file system, storing FTP server, where you are storing customer data. From that, all right. So, 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 Ganesh, the, the, the bottom one is the Post, post, right? Yeah. The second one is the get yeah. customers. Can you go up? Scroll up. And I want to see the other ones. How do they look like? Well, well you get it. put. Yeah. Put C, and, we, and we have a customer ID. And we have another customer ID get. Yeah. This is get for customers. Okay. Get on the customer resource. This is put on the customer yeah. slash customer ID. And third one is get on the customers. It's on yeah, customer okay. ID. So we got four. And it's a post on the customers. So so right here then, uh, which one is, is the main flow or 
this is the main flag actually this one is uh, you know every every request will goes uh, will come so here only this is only one okay. resource here right okay yeah one one listener there are no as these are flows but there are no listener configured only the, the source is empty always the request lands over here okay from the, from the postman what is local host 8081 slash api right see mm, yeah if you see this listener path is api, API and okay. local host 8081 so the request comes and lands at this point then go to router yeah router but yeah go ahead. i was going to say i think you i think you you get into that but there are more other stuff in this page than the four um Yeah, like those ones. I'm not sure what. Yeah, this one. This one we will explain. I'll explain later. Okay, that's fine. When we discuss about error handling, that moment I will tell you what is on error propagate on the stuff. Okay? Yeah. Don't worry on that. It is understandable. It's only now try to understand how router routes the request to a specific flow. Okay. So if my request is like this, um, the method is get. Yeah. And the resource is customers. Yeah. Okay. So local host eighty eighty one API. This is the this is the URL the listener receives actually. This is a local host eighty eighty one API, right? Okay. Afterwards, what what URL I am requesting? Customers I am requesting. The method is get. Yeah. So it it routes to the flow that is matching customer and get. So here for that. Uh, This is the method. This is the flow that use the get method and customers. Oh, okay. Right. So control comes over here. Therefore, here okay, this is don't worry. Whatever you defined over that's come back to our uh, client. I'm sure that's right. Okay. Is it complicated, Hamoud? No, no. Now I'm right? now 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 I'm um, you know. Now I understand. So, so, all right. The first one is gonna route to. If I put like this, this one, this one, yeah. over here, and this one point to this flow. Yeah, because we ask, because postman we ask it to get it. We didn't say to post it. We didn't say to yeah. put it right. We say get. Yeah. yeah. Because it get is gonna route you to the get and uh, and uh, get method. Exactly. If I put the post, it's gonna take you the post. Post method, right? Yeah. Post. Got it. This one we didn't work. This call we didn't work. Yeah. Okay. This one we didn't work. This flow. Post like this. The flow that waiting to be worked on, uh, the post method for this flow. Yeah, yeah. Can put some loggers and also we can test. Is it control coming over here or not? Yeah. Hmm. So call will land at this flow. Hmm. So now the client can client is customer is this can. Send a body the customer information and we can create the customer on the back end, right? The application mm -hmm. can take the customer information and put the back end. Yeah. You can modify it. You can really with all the thing operations I can do, right? As a customer. Right. Okay. What is implement of uh, importance of this API? And this is very basic thing. We're going yeah. forward. We're going to discuss a little bit advanced concept of API design. Hope this this got you know some idea about the API, the REST API, the resource. Yeah, this is really good. This is really good because, like, we designed the API, yeah. we you know test it, we mark it, then we implement it. Yeah, implement it. And then you can test it. Yeah, retrieve it in a mule, and like a, in a mule, like what do you call that? Studio or something? Exactly. Endpoint Studio. Then you import. Like Yep. Yeah, we need to play you importing in a endpoint studio where you can do more, like you know, transformation or more, uh, you know, 
you know, parsing. I don't know. So at, exactly, at, yeah. at, at the end of the day, is that when you when you download it or move it to and the other and any point studio, yeah, you will do something with the message and then either store it somewhere or or do something or whatever that customer want. Correct. So that's exactly. a high level. That's yeah. like high high level process, right? Right. Exactly. How how API design or API through more through me all sorts works. Exactly. Now we send this thing, right? So now what happens? The step request go to the mule, and it takes the mule request and yeah. transforms to sorry HTTP request and transform mule event. That will all you know that happens over here. That's the the story we discussed yesterday. Yeah. Okay. So this is the basic fundamental on API design and API implementation. That's nice. Right. So now coming to this is a debug process. Okay. So debug process is very, very important thing now while in the developing process. So what I want to do is I want to put some logger in the post method. I want to put one more logger. So in the logger I am putting as uh, Something I'm putting a new employee. Getting some database. So I want to debug my application. You know debugging, right? Debugging means yeah, like test. You something. want to walk through uh, the application flow, how your application is executing. Yeah. Some some of you you got an error. The debug is very important to trace the error. At, at what point the application is a uh, erroring out? So that you want to identify, right? For other purpose with the debug. Mm -hmm. Got it. So the debug, we need to put something like uh, breakpoint. Means at what point you want to, uh, from what point onwards you want to walk through your application. That is your breakpoint. Mm -hmm. Okay. So here, what I'm doing is I'm I'm creating one more variable over here. For simplicity, variable here is some logger of the not a variable. I'm putting some logger here. Okay. Okay. Simple some static test in the customer API and in the customer. So I'm putting a breakpoint over here. The simple the breakpoint is right click over any component and add yeah. breakpoint. Okay, to add some dot in the corner. Yeah. Right. This is a breakpoint. Now I'm starting my new application in debug mode. So hope currently is running on the run mode. Stop it. And uh, right click here, debug project, right? Select the debug. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> So the project will deploy in a debug mode. Now, mm -hmm. I'm hitting my request. So, okay. so if I hit right, what happens? The control is stuck over here. 
at this point. See, you see this this one got yeah. uh, highlighted, right? Yeah. Okay. So you can see at this point what is the payload, what are the variables, what are the attributes, all things you can see at this point. So at this variables matches with oh. yeah. So let me come down. So now payload, we are not seeing any payload. The payload is empty because the body is empty. Actually, we are not seeing anything. Okay. Right. So body is empty. Therefore, the payload is empty. You, you yeah. could have some seen some uh, something. Now. Variables are also, also zero. There are no variables created. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now we see the attributes uh, in the headers. Are we sending the attributes? Let me see. Are we sending the attributes in the postman? There are no headers we are sending, right? There are no query parameters we are sending. So attributes are also empty because we are not sending anything. Yes, if right. we send, I can show you that. But right. I will I will shadow on this thing. I can I can do one thing. Then let me let me send some information. Body. I am sending some header parameters, I am sending query parameters, I am sending body types. Okay. So, posting this thing. Now, at this moment, you see the payload is name Mary, right? This is the payload you are sending, right? right. It's the payload. Yep. And what are the attributes you are sending? Headers, you see the headers. Um, technology is going to be so this is one header we are sending, right? Yep. The query parameters. Coriparam, on Coriparam we are sending that is called City is equal to New York. Yeah. All right, we can see. Now I am moving a little further. If you press F6 or you can press this one, next processor, it comes over here. Okay. I press F6 yeah. again. See, the control go to the post method, post customers. Because we sent them how it, more. How it goes to post right. customer? Because we are using post method yeah. and the resource is customers. Therefore, it goes over here, right? Mm -hmm. And I press F6 again, goes to variable, and press F6 again. See, now a new variable got created. If the variable size is 2 now, see, employee name is equal to Mary. I, what is this, this? I don't know. But employee, this is one employee we created, right? But just now, what it? Okay. Now F6 means the, comp the flow got executed, completed, and you can see the result in the post method. If I use a get method, right? Get method. Mm -hmm. Now what I can see, send it. It come over here. Come over here. Now put F6. The control goes to get customer. See. Yeah, yeah. Get customers. The flow is C because the request is and the customer objects. We are invoking get method. The corresponding flow got invoked, right? This will get executed. This got this this information, Hamoud, and this information, right? So after execution of this one, the client you can see that that's true. Got it. Got it.